later. Uh, welcome to uh, Andy's Commercials Repairs. Um, I'm gonna show you today how to replace plastic housing on R2 and your typical robo poop unit. Uh, in this situation, our unit has a severe damage right here in the upper uh, housing. Um, it's quite expensive to replace it. A lot of people probably scrap them in this stage of life. However, the motor in this unit is still fine. The unit runs okay. There's no other issues with it. Uh, the only thing that's broken is the upper housing. Uh, it's a little bit of work. Uh, part of the loan costs probably a couple hundred dollars. Uh, you can order them online on eBay or Amazon, some other places. It's the upper housing for the unit. Web Restaurant also sells it. Um, I'm just gonna show you quickly how to do it yourself and replace it. So if the only issue with your unit is the housing and everything else is fine, um, I would recommend replacing it. For $200, you're still able to save your unit and continue going versus spending $1,000 or so, $1,200 for a new uh, robot. Um, in this situation, somebody probably uh, used the ball wrong, lock it in place without looking and broke the housing right here. You can see where the safety switches that activate the units. There's a big hole in it. Also on the side of the unit are cracks as well. So it looks like somebody dropped it actually on the floor and broke it. So the bottom housing is still fine, a great part of it. The only part that's broken is the upper housing. So we're gonna swap it with the housing that I have over here. Um, in this unit, um, the motor actually burned out. I know. Uh, it's a Robocoop, so it should have a safety precaution, and uh, which is the basic uh, safety switch right here. It's your thermal switch that prevents the unit from burning out. Uh, however, this is R2 dice, and those motors are notorious for going out even with a um, uh, safety included in the unit. I don't know. Uh, crappy design. Uh, this is one of the units I would never recommend, and I would rec not recommend to anybody to purchase. R2 dice is just not really good. If you want to dice something with your uh, Robocoop, uh, purchase a different unit, don't buy R2 dice. Why? I had two situations, two of my friends bought them, and the motors on those units don't last. They just burn out, they go in smoke. This is your typical R2 dice motor, right here. The bearing is perfectly fine, there's nothing in it, spinning, and no issues. Uh, but the actual motor, doesn't work. Um, the capacitor that was included with this unit starts smoking, the smoke starts coming out of it. Um, I was thinking, oh, maybe all I need to do uh, just replace the capacitor. Uh, even the capacitor is, you know, it costs like $150, it's just crazy because usually capacitors cost like 20 bucks, $15 or so, maybe less. I bought a new capacitor for it. Still, a couple minutes later, capacitor exploded, starts smoking out. Basically, the winding on the motor is messed up. So even with a safety switch, precaution, and so on, two of those units I've seen with my own eyes, the motors, after two years of operation, literally like months past the warranty, burned out. And uh, I just don't recommend anybody using them. If you want dicing, get yourself a larger unit, a uh, higher capacity unit like CL50, R6, R4, that have dicing capacities and they uh, can literally do better job. Why waste money on that unit that doesn't last? This is the unit that the Robocoop doesn't utilize the motor that they usually have in the other units like R2N, R2 Clear, R2 uh, um, uh, Ultra. Uh, it's basically different uh, motor unit. It has a longer shaft. Uh, looks like it's a Leroy Summer motor. It junk. It just doesn't do the job. It burns out within two years. Maybe somebody got lucky, use them uh, less often, and get away with it. But I, me, from personal experience, I uh, saw two of those going out. Never seen a motor on the Robocoop going out like that. So I don't recommend that. Anyway, what I got from it is this housing that I'm gonna be swapping with this one because this one's a gigantic hole in the center and the cracks all around it. So the customer gave it to me, he's like, hey, can you still do something with it? It's either that or purchase a new base, uh, which is way more money. 
So I said, yeah, if your motor is still okay, I'm gonna swap it, that's what I'm gonna do. So here we start with, we're gonna need a couple things for it. We're gonna need a couple tools to uh, get it going here. Uh, our torque screwdriver, T20, another torque screwdriver for the switch. Don't know the size of it, I'll find out eventually, call RoboCoop and ask them exactly what you call that. Um, because the switch connection screws are a little bit smaller than the T20 size. You're gonna need a very sharp pick. Uh, anything will do, even a large needle, uh, larger in size, a uh, thick one like, uh, I don't know, a uh, needle used to sew a ladder, boots or something like that will do as well. I have this little small pick right here uh, with a sharp pointer and that will do the job as well. You're gonna need an impact wrench or a socket wrench with a 716 socket on it. Oh, a good old school W40. I say anywhere you work with something you've been sitting for a while, nuts, screws, bolts, so on, always have a can of that. It really helps and really make your job easier. We're gonna start with removing the screws on the bottom of the unit. Uh, you guys have seen it in my previous video when I was replacing the cord, how to do it. Uh, you take your 220 screwdriver, go on the bottom of the unit, I already did it. Uh, loosen up the screws on four openings right here after you remove your feet out of the unit. Uh, once you have them all loosened up, slowly and gently remove the gray base out of the unit. Loosen up all those four screws gently to remove the gray base from the bottom of the unit. Okay, we got it all loosened up. Slowly remove that. Now pay attention because you have your safety switch right here on the bottom of the unit. You have to, one thing I forgot, use a pliers of any sort, anything where you work. As I say, it could be a socket wrench uh, or it could be regular pliers. I prefer pliers because I have a good grip on them. Uh, one hand you hold on to the switch from the inside of the base, the other hand you turn the nut that's securing your uh, safety switch, your uh, uh, high temperature switch uh, that prevents the motor from burning out, reset button they call it, and slowly turn the nut out, gently remove it, the nut and pull it aside. Remove the base, your gray base. Be careful with the screws. Don't lose them. We have one over here. And here it happens. As I say, some of the drop that you can actually see part of the housing stuck inside that socket right there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold on to it with our hand and try to remove the screw and save that. And yep, comes out easily. Usually those screws are screws are not really stuck in there. Um, because uh, they are so deep in, you don't really need a W40 actually to loosen them up and they go straight in the plastic. So gently just remove those screws out of the housing. You should be, uh, you should have four screws there and that's all it is. As you can see the housing is pretty dirty, not that bad after all. Uh, pieces of plastic from the upper housing are still in there, broken off I guess during the damage. So we're gonna clean it, we're gonna wash it off, but for now we're gonna focus on the removal of the actual motor. And that's what I will show you guys because you're never gonna see that anywhere else how to remove the motor out of the unit. Um, so here's our motor right here on the bottom. Pay attention to all the wiring inside the unit, how it's connected, where is your switch, so on and on. And the way you want to replace this housing and remove the motor is pretty straightforward. You lift it up upwards, careful because there's a spacer, a plastic spacer on the bottom of the unit. Put the motor base up, grab your uh, pick, and uh, using a rubber mallet or a handle for the better. I prefer rubber mallet, I just don't want to damage it. Get the pick on the top of the unit, you will see three dots. It's like three holes right here. One actually of them already popped out. I guess the uh, plate that holds the motor in place must be damaged because it should not happen. Anyway, you can see the three dots right here. 
one, two, three. There are basically covers for the screws, uh, bolts that hold the motor in place. So all you need to do, get between the edge of the housing and the cover right here, use your rubber mallet and slowly put it in and gently lift it up and your cap comes out. You get three caps covering those uh, bolts right here. So do the same thing for two additional ones. But in my situation, I'm only going in for the, for the second one because the third will actually pop right out. Looks like the bolt is loose. And what you're gonna see, there is a silicone uh, applied to the uh, head of those bolts right here. Gently applying a praying tool, remove that silicone. I guess they use that silicone to prevent the moisture uh, from getting in and also kind of securing those uh, bolts in place. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna use your W40, spray it on the heads of the bolts, very important. Those bolts have been sitting here probably for five, six years without any um, uh, lubrication. They're probably stuck in there uh, pretty well. So I prefer using a, your uh, electric uh, impact wrench. As I say, 716 socket. You put it on top of the unit and crack those bolts right out. Most of the time they don't really hold it hard, but you never know. You can see there's rust on top of one of those guys. They're not stainless, they're just galvanized steel, so they rust. So do the same thing to the remaining ones. Looks like they all loose pretty well, so that gives me an idea that the actual spacer right there, it's gone. It's the actually, uh, they call it a motor adapter that holds the motor in place. Probably have to replace it too, even though I didn't plan on it. Now, once you have those bolts loosened up, slowly lift the housing up. And you can see it comes up pretty easily. No problem with it. And I was right, the plastic housing or the motor adapter is completely messed up. It's broken. Anyhow, so we lift it up and put it to the side. Now, you're gonna see you still have the um, all the connectors and cord connected to the unit. In my situation, the new base comes with a cord um, switches and the actual switch that goes in the uh, to activate the bolt uh, already included. Why? Because it's an older unit that was damaged or the motor burned out so I have the, all the components left in there. If you are doing this yourself and you don't have this kind of housing from an older unit or broken unit you will have to replace everything, meaning remove that safety switch right here uh, for the bowl, remove the switch assembly for on and off switch right here. Uh, I can explain you how to do it uh, and also remove the cord, which is basically just secured by two screws and a squeeze step right here. Uh, pretty straightforward switch is really easy. You're using again a torque screwdriver as I said, I don't know the size of that one. I will call the Robocop tomorrow and find out. I'll post it later on in the, in the link description. What size is that? Um, you don't have to remove that uh, bowl switch right here. Uh, it's a smaller size. It's probably like one third the size of the T20. Uh, and then in order to remove the switch assembly, which I am not going to do because I already have one by in place, you will have to remove the front plate right here slowly uh, best way to do it probably will be use a hair dryer heat this plate up really really well with a hair dryer or paint remover like a gun like a heat gun slowly so to loosen up the glue once you have the glue loosened up this one's already peeling off uh, you can just lift it right off and there are two four squeeze stops i don't know if you can see that on the side of the switch right here uh, on each side there are two and basically you squeeze them out and the switch will just pop right out and in order to remove the cord all you need to do is just remove those two screws and a squeeze stop and you can pull the cord through the opening over here well you're probably gonna have to deal with those stabs right here um, not sure if each one of them can go out at the same time uh, probably have to go slowly through the opening. Worst case scenario, we'll have to splice it out, cut them off, and 
put the new ones on. I, uh, in this situation, all I have to do is uh, transfer all the components from this unit into this unit. So the motor, the safety switch, which is also looking not so pretty, but looks like it's still in place. Uh, actually, the rubber is still okay, and then the screws are still in place. It's not broken, it's not cracked, so I can still reuse that. So here's the key. Make sure you pay attention to the wiring. So if you look at this unit, you want to make sure you know where those connectors go. Take a picture um, of all those connectors, because if, you if you're going to be disconnecting them, you want to put them back exactly where they belong. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a photo, mental photo in this situation of that, and uh, just to make sure where those connectors go, so I don't have a problem. So I know exactly where each connection goes. Uh, there are one, two, three, four of those connectors uh, for uh, on and off switches and the poles. And I'm gonna transfer that back to the existing new base right here, same way. So I have to memorize what goes where. I'm just gonna mark them. Uh, this is L. So that's gonna be my left one. L2, and that's gonna be R1 and R2. So that way I know what goes where so I don't have a problem later on uh, finding out what belongs where. Uh, so I'm gonna remove those uh, connectors out of the unit. Uh, preferably using uh, needle nose pliers or any kind of pliers that you can grab onto so you don't have damage those connectors, gently pull them up. Usually you can actually get them out of with your hand, there you go. Gently get them out. Okay, so I got all those connectors out. I'm gonna disconnect the cord right now and the connection that the cord makes into the unit itself. So we got Hot, neutral, and ground, your typical connection for the unit, like anywhere else. Uh, the ground is connected with a uh, hex screw right here. Um, so I'm just going to use a regular screwdriver to remove that. And then your neutral connects right here. Uh, it's like a isolated connector kind of tubing uh, I guess for the liquid not to get in and of course to prevent from shortening the connection right here um, slowly disconnected there's a there's a connector inside that joins two uh, of those wires and your third connection goes into your uh, reset button safety switch right here this one we don't have to disconnect. So all we need to disconnect really is your uh, ground and the neutral. So we're going to use a regular screwdriver. Just a typical flat cut. As I said, I like to use W40 anywhere I go because you never know how how bad this thing is stuck in there. So just spray a little bit on it and slowly unscrew it. Uh, a washer underneath that screw so keep it don't lose that keep hold on to all, all your screws and not so you don't lose anything like me right now all those cups you can even reuse that silicone little dabs if you want to I actually like to use a, a fresh silicone on top of the bolts once I'm done anyway so I got all the remove right here, I disconnect the connectors, I disconnect the uh, wiring over here. The only thing I have hanging over here is the neutral, so I'm just going to pull on it gently. Try to get it out of that socket right there. Oh, it's pretty stuck in there. So I'm just going to use a little pliers right here, grab onto it. <laughs> uh. 
So I'm just gonna grab onto that. Oh, it's really hard to pull this thing out. I don't know why it's so stuck. Anyway, I gotta disconnect it from the motor. So I have my black still connected to the safety switch. My neutral got disconnected and I disconnected my ground as well. Uh, all I need to do right now is remove those little ta uh, tabs over here that connects the cord into the unit. Uh, the ski stuff, so T20 again, two screws. Slowly unscrew that this thing is really messed up. The whole housing is broken. So I'm still gonna be able to say that safety, uh, the, the, the uh, switch box right here, I mean, uh, they usually don't go out. It, really reliable those switches are really solid i never see them go um but everything else is pretty messed up so i'm just gonna throw this housing away so i'll be saying those little uh metal tabs that i have over here on the side sometimes they get dented as well anyhow i'm gonna try to pull this cord through the opening see if i can save it if not it doesn't matter i have another cord in this unit already it came with it as i say i removed the motor out of it so i have the free housing out of that Anyhow, let's see, we can disconnect that and see if we can actually save that uh, cord. So let me grab those pliers and take that safety switch out of the uh, hot wire and see if we can pull one by one out of the housing. If not, I can just break the housing right here so I can save that cord. So go one by one, pull one strain of cord at a time. I'm going to try to pull the neutral first and see if it goes. There we go ground and the black so here is our cord we're actually able to save it of course it's still in good shape i can reuse it for another unit or something so this is actually factory cord it's got uh, hot connectors on it high high temperature connectors on it white uh, ground and the black hot so you're gonna save that cord so this is what we have left over here make sure you don't, lo don't lose those balls right here so we got three bolts three washers that you put on top of the unit. Make sure you save those washers. Those washers very often get kind of glued inside the housing right here. Uh, take them all out. So you got three bolts and three washers. It's all galvanized steel, so very often rusts. Put them back on the top of the, your, your bolts so you have them in place. Uh, the only thing I have over here, I'm gonna kind of save it because the guy didn't actually provide me with one. I kind of don't like doing that, but I'm gonna do it. This seal is still okay. Uh, the deal was I only replaced the housing. I am not replacing the seal. He doesn't want to spend any money. That seal is not terrible, but it's not great. It's still gonna seal the bearing. The bearing on the motor, it's still good. It's it's spinning freely. Doesn't have any damage to it. However, the housing was completely messed up. So I'm gonna have to replace that. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Always remember the orientation of the motor, the, the way it goes into your unit. Uh, basically, the way it's positioned inside your housing, the capacitor is facing right here. Um, I hope you can see my, my finger right here. So this is the way the capacitor is facing right here. So I'm going to show you when, once I get all this situated, how I'm going to position the motor from, 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 the, um, from the top, from the bottom up. Anyway, so I have this housing right here. This housing is still in good shape. It's not damaged. Uh, got some minor cracks on it, but nothing really major. Uh, I have the switch already in place right here. So I don't even have to reuse the switch from that old unit. I'm going to save it for later. Um, so I have the cord that powers the unit. So all I need to do is put back all the, com the motor back in and reinstall the bolts and uh, reinstall the connectors. Um, of course, I have to remember what goes where so I don't make a mistake of replacing it. Uh, my switch is still connected, as you can see right here, to the motor. That switch <laughs> basically break off from the housing because somebody broke the housing completely. So I'm gonna reuse that switch for later. I just have to remember where the uh, connections of the of the uh, wiring goes into the motor and into the switch. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with it for a while. Um, so this is our old housing, as you can see. Big hole, um, big crack right here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's junk, it's gone. 
so I can still save those because very often the, those get banned and um, get damaged. Uh, the little slots over here on the side of the unit, they allow the air to come through. And this thing right here. So uh, this is your uh, switch box right here. Uh, on and off and pulse. So I don't have the heating um, gun with me. I'm gonna try to do it gently, just slowly lift it up with a screwdriver and remove it. Uh, at the end of the day, I am not gonna be saving that. Very often the glue on the needle is really, really thick. But anyhow, um, I'm gonna remove this later. I don't wanna mess with it right now, I don't have time. I wanna show you guys just to how to put the motor back in and put the new housing back. Anyway, so as I say, in order to remove the, remove the front plate, which is this uh, piece of aluminum plate right here, by heating it up really, really well with a uh, 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 hair dryer and praying it out slowly with a screwdriver. If you wanna save it, if you don't wanna save it, cause that plate costs like 25 bucks, you can just rip it off, pull it out, and then you push tabs on each side of the switch right here, two tabs right here and two tabs right there, and push it forward, and this whole assembly will pop out. Anyhow. Right now, we have a bigger fish to fry. We're gonna put the motor back in and we're gonna replace the upper assembly of the unit. As you can see, like in my previous video, I had the same situation. I already complained about this adapter plate for those units. You spend all this money. This is probably like five years old or so. Um, it's completely broken again. Cracked in places and all my stuff. I have a spare one, thank God. I didn't even know this thing is broken. I'm gonna have to let the guy know that's all messed up so i'm gonna replace it anyhow uh four screws large ones um use a w40 on the top of each of the heads use a large head flat screwdriver to remove them as i said that wasn't planned for i didn't really plan for that but i'm gonna have to change it anyway so it will kind of give you an idea what this thing looks like like how the motor looks like uh, what's on? You see, just falling apart as I <laughs> unscrew those uh, screws right here. Um, it's just a plastic adapter. It allows you to basically install the the motor in place into your housing. Before the motor actually was installed directly into the housing, I guess they changed the design. Maybe uh, because of the weight of the motor, uh, uh, um, how do you say that? Uh, the weight of the motor pulled so hard on the, on the housing, the housing brake. So now they decided, oh, we're gonna put the adapter plate. So uh, you actually, the motor is gonna be actually connected to the housing uh, with this adapter so it doesn't put the weight on it, I guess. I don't know. That's maybe the reason for it. Anyway, this whole thing is gone. It's, it's like it's like glass, it's completely broken. It's pieces. Anyway. Another one bites dust. I have another one, I have a spare one. I'm gonna show you how to install it right now. It's pretty straightforward. Before I do that, I'm gonna spray a little W40, get in my rack and wipe all this stuff off. I should use like, a degreaser, but W40 works pretty good actually too. It looks like the bearing is still okay. I don't see any damage on it. So your bearing is actually located right here underneath this aluminum housing. As I told you in previous video, change your seal because eventually liquid sips right through this opening right here. And because there is a lip right here, so if there is any liquid in there, it just slowly sips in, in, inside the housing of the motor and eats your bearing. Anyhow, I'm gonna get a towel. Also, this grab off right here. And I'm gonna put a new adapter plate on the top of that. So you're not gonna only be seeing me replacing the housing today, but you're gonna also gonna see uh, me replacing the plastic adapter plate that goes on top of the unit. Anyway, uh, let me pause and get this adapter. I have it somewhere in the back, and uh, I'll get back to you in a second. 